Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here. Today I would like to continue on the topic raised by my good friend Dante from Natty Life, whose recent viral video addressed why Bronze Era lifters had flat chests. And in particular, I will be focusing on the developments that occurred in the Silver Era that led to the bulbous pectoral muscles that suddenly grew on Silver Era lifters, as is so obvious from these awesome photos from bodybuilders such as Alan Stefan. And I've said it before, this is one of the best old school side chest poses I've ever seen. Pure perfection, if you will. Here is another from Abe Goldberg, who not only possessed massive chest musculature, but displayed a massive rib cage too, as is evident in this photo. And equally impressive, this phenomenal photo of John Farbotnik. I mean, damn, look at those slabs of peck meat set on that mighty rib cage and those softball biceps finishing off the entire old school side chest pose. Amazing. As Dante explained in his recent video, bronze era lifters practiced odd lifting, which consists of one arm and two arm lifting, where the weights are either deadlifted, swung, snatched, or pressed, or even jerked upwards. And of course, the bench press only came into vogue later during the silver era, which of course led to most, but not all of the bronze era lifters possessing a build with strong arms, shoulders, backs and traps with impressive abdominals, but lacking in both leg and chest development. Now, when we look again at the silver era lifters, their massive pecs are the obvious product of adopting high volume work with heavy bench pressing. Prior to the invention of the bench press, the more common form of exercising the chest was through horizontal pressing movements known as prone pressing, such as the bridge press, as made famous by George Hackenschmidt and Joe Nordquist, and floor pressing, and with such practices, most lifters did begin to develop the chest muscle. Soon after the bench press was invented, bench press records were starting to be published, which spurred on the desire to begin breaking bench press records in what one could call the early days of powerlifting. Numbers in the bench press kept going up, with Alan Steffen setting new records around the 400 pound mark, and finally, Doug Hepburn breaking the 500 pound mark, which was quickly followed by Marvin Eder and Reg Park. Not only were records being broken, but silver era bodybuilders began realizing the relative ease at which the chest muscles could grow. In the silver era, therefore, a large masculine chest had become the new aesthetic, and the new desired physique was to have a massive chest with slabs of pec muscle like a chest of armor. And on that note, we also note that silver era bodybuilders began to develop their rib cage. This is clear to see in these classic old school side chest poses, where not only the pectoral muscle development is obvious, but their deep rib cage development on which their pectoral muscles attach to and are showcased and presented in such majestic display. This of course was due to the second major development that occurred during the silver era in regards to the evolving aesthetic and physique, and that was the development of and incorporation of the breathing squat combined with the breathing pullover. This combination of exercise was said to increase the rib cage by enlarging the rib cage through the stretching of the cartilage in the rib cage. The breathing squat stimulated breathlessness, which was compensated by the stretching action of the pullover, which stimulated an increase in lung capacity. The trend was initially exploited by Joseph Curtis Heese, whose students began reporting massive gains in muscle and in their rib cages. Soon after, silver era bodybuilders everywhere were incorporating the breathing squat and pullover along with bench pressing, and the result was the massive aesthetic physique that is associated with the silver era. A massive set of pectorals set on a large impressive rib cage with much thicker developed legs than lifters from the bronze era. This look went on to influence the later massive and shredded physiques of the golden era that would follow with the introduction of anabolic steroids. Of course, there are those that still prefer the strong and athletic look of the bronze era, and that's fine too. Fortunately, knowledge about the bronze era methods of training are now more available, and if that's your preferred look, then odd lifting, muscle control, and forms of hand balancing and gymnastics are recommended. But for that silver era look, 
a three day a week full body routine focused around the breathing squat, pullover and bench press is the prescription for that silver era look. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video on why silver era lifters had such a massive chest in comparison to bronze era lifters. And if you did, please give the video a like, subscribe and leave me a comment. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e-magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars, merchandise and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eder, John Grimmick, Reg Park and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available and to collaborate, please get in touch.